Let's explore compound interest. Probably when you first learned about interest and did math with it, likely in middle school, you learned about simple interest. You only get interest on your original investment, and this is way easier for middle school students to handle. But you actually want to get interest on your interest. That's what compound interest is, and that's how investing really works. So, simple interest is on the left over here. We have $100,000 at 12% simple annual interest. So if you put $100,000 in an account, 12% of that would be $12,000. And with simple interest, we add $12,000 every year. And so at the end of five years, there would be $160,000 in the account. We're assuming you're not putting any other money in. But over on the right here is compound interest. If every year you get interest on your interest. So year one, again, 12% of 100,000 is 12,000. But now you want to get 12% of this, 112,000 not 12% 12 of 100,000. You really have 112,000 in the bank. So you do, and you notice every year you're getting a little bit more and a little bit more, and in the end, there's quite a difference between year five, between simple interest and compound interest. So with compound interest, you get interest on your interest. So if you were saving money, which one would you prefer? I'm going to guess the compound interest. In this example, you end up with over 16,000 more dollars. And if you're loaning money to people, imagine that you're a bank, which one would you prefer? Probably also the compound interest because they're going to pay you back more. If you loan out $100,000, you can get paid back $176,234 with the compound interest in this scenario. Compound interest is an example of exponential growth. We've already learned about that. So look at the scenario that we just explored for $100,000 invested at 12% annual interest compounded yearly. When you see this compounded yearly, that means it's done once a year, probably at the end of the year, for five years. Well, here's our familiar exponential growth formula, and these are the values we need to plug in. We start with $100,000, the interest rate 12% is 0.12 as a decimal, and the time is five years. So we can plug those in. We've had a lot of practice at this, and there's the rest of the work that leads us to the number that you've already seen, 176000 $234 and 17 cents. That's nice, but what if we compounded interest monthly instead of yearly, which is how a lot of things really do work? A monthly interest rate would be the annual interest rate divided by 12 because there are 12 months in the year. You need to be aware that for the rest of your lives, savings and loans rates are usually expressed as APRs, annual percentage rates. If you use the monthly interest rate on a commercial or on a sign in front of your bank, there would probably be some smaller numbers. A lot of times decimal values less than one. And the general public just seems to understand they like numbers between one and 10. Even if they have some decimals, they like those numbers better. And you can learn some more about annual percentage rates and see what current ones are by searching terms like auto loan rates, mortgage rates, and savings rates. And you'll see annual percentage rates. So we'll have to divide those by 12 to develop monthly interest rates. How is this going to affect our formula? Well, here's how. You see a new letter, N. And it's the number of times the interest will be compounded during a year. We'll take our annual interest rate and divide it by how many times it's going to be compounded each year. And then we also have to put it out here. So we'll start plugging in 12. If it's a monthly compounding interest situation, then you need to divide the annual rate by 12 to get a monthly rate. And then realize that if you're going to do something 12 times a year, we've got to multiply the number of years by 12. So that's the compound interest formula. It's essentially exponential growth, but we got to take care of converting an annual rate to, in this case, a monthly rate, and then realize that there are 12 months in the year. So let's see this in action. We know in one year at 12% interest, if you come, if you do the interest once, you're just gonna get $12,000 and you'll have $112,000 at the end of one year. But if we compound every month, well, we'll take our 12% annual rate, divide it by 12 to get a 1% monthly rate. And so every month we'll get 1% compound interest. And when you go the whole way through at the end of the year, you have $112,683. That's $683 more than what you had by only compounding once a year. So monthly interest helps you out if you're saving money. It helps you out if you're the one loaning out the money to someone else. 
Let's change the example we had to compounding monthly. And this will help you see what's going on by the extra value we have to use. So now we have $100,000 invested at a 12% annual interest rate, but we're going to compound it monthly for five years. So we're going to divide our annual rate by 12, and then we have to multiply the number of years by 12. P is still the principal, the initial investment. A is the amount we have at a given time in years. So let's start looking at what we've got. Years is 5 in this situation, so we're going to put 5 in for T. And 12 times 5 is 60. Hopefully this makes sense to you. If you're going to do something every month for 5 years, one time per month for 5 years, and there's 12 months in a year, then whatever it is you're doing is going to happen 60 times. And for us, it's calculating interest on this account. So again, that's why we had the 12 times the 5, and that gives us 60. We're going to put $100,000 in originally, that's in for P, and our APR annual interest rate or annual percentage rate is 0.12, so we'll plug that in for R, and then we're going to have to divide that by 12 to get a monthly rate, and that is in this case 0 0.01. So now we can add the 0 0.01 to the 1, and we're all set here. This is all in terms of months, and this is in terms of months. It's 60 months, and now we have a monthly rate thing going on inside the parentheses in red. And when you do the rest of the calculating, $181,669.67. Let's compare this to what we got compounding once a year for five years. Here's the chart we had earlier, and it's higher by over $5,000. So by compounding monthly 60 times over the course of five years, we came out much further ahead with monthly compounding of interest. All right, let's solve for another thing inside compound interest. Let's solve for T. So if you have $5,000 that you would like to see grow to $8,000, and you've got it in an account with an annual interest rate of 6%, but it's compounded monthly, how long will it take for your money to get to the at $8,000 goal that you have? So we've got our compound interest formula here. 12 is already in for N because we're compounding monthly, so we know that that's going to be a 12. Our principal, the starting amount is 5,000. The amount we'd like to see it grow to is 8,000. Our annual percentage rate or annual interest rate is 6%, so that's 0 0.06 as a decimal. We don't know the time, so we'll leave it as T. We'll plug all those things in and look to see what we can put together. We definitely want to take this 0 0.06 and divide it by 12 to find out what it is, and it's 0 0.005. Then we want to add it to the 1. And you see a variable in the exponent spot. You're probably smelling logarithms coming up. But first, let's divide both sides by 5,000. Okay, t is in the exponent spot. So we're going to need to bring logs into both sides so we can move it down. Here come the logs, log base 10. And now the key move, 12t can now come in front to be a coefficient. And now we have a lot of calculator work to go. Let's divide both sides by log 1.005. There's what you get. And now we'll divide both sides by 12. And we've solved for t. If we go to two decimal places, that's about 7.85 years is how long it's going to take. All right. In a moment, I'll ask you to pause the video, and you'll try solving for p, the starting or initial amount. So how much money do you need in a savings account that pays 3% annual interest compounded monthly, that means 12 times a year, if you want to have $7,000 at the end of eight years. Please pause the video and give this a try. Here are the values that we have. We don't know P, that's what we're trying to find out the starting amount. You're ending with $7,000. The annual rate is 3%, that's 0 0.03, and it's for eight years. You divide the 0 0.03 by 12 and get 0 0.0025. 12 times 8 is 96. And our plan here then is to add inside the parentheses. And then let's find out what this value to the 96th power is. And then we can divide both sides by that. And we found P. You're going to need to invest $5,508.04 to reach your goal. 